Permit me to welcome you in a very special way to Fred Achando Analysis and to say a big thanks for your continued support, ladies and gentlemen. And then grant me the latitude to request you for just three quick, uh, quick things. With profound humility, number one, I want to request you, if you have not subscribed to our channel, kindly subscribe to our channel. Hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell so that whenever I do a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. The second one, very fast and again with profound humility, kindly like our videos. I always like explaining that when you like our videos, the more likes a video gets, the more likely is that YouTube will recommend it to more viewers and the rating will go high. So if you rate our videos high by liking, then you'll be supporting this channel uh, in a way that is very, very fantastic. And kindly share with me your comments in the comment section to know what you think. And again, I'm deeply humbled. Now the Auditor General, Madam Nancy, released a very damaging report recently. She said that uh, since the inception of the county government, that is in 2010, after we promulgated our new constitution, where the resources were now trickling down from the national government to the county government, we have lost a whooping 35 uh, billion Kenya shillings. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, 35 billion Kenya shillings that we have lost. She went ahead to say that our county governments uh, lose 500 million Kenya shillings every month. And I, I felt that is very sad because Kenya needs money. We are begging for food from other countries. We are lining up for food uh, to be given one packet of, uh, uh, of maize flour. We see animals dying here and there. Rivers are drying. And you understand the situation in Kenya. So when she said that we lose uh, 500 million shillings per, per month, I felt this is really pathetic. So I did a quick calculation and it reveals that it means that every day we lose uh, 167 million Kenya shillings, ladies and gentlemen, just imagine. And, and, and uh, I felt surely, should we allow this to move on? Because for the Auditor General to give us this statement, she's simply telling Kenyans, look, this is your money as a taxpayer and it is being mismanaged. Now, the funniest thing about this is that about three quarters of this money is going to ghost workers, people who are not there, but their accounts are huge, accounts that have got no owners, and I believe they are owned by maybe the governors. Now, most of these cases are trickling from the previous regimes. A quick uh, example is uh, in Kisi County, the governor, the current governor Simba Rati, found out that, I'm just referring, that we have 800 and 61 ghost workers, ladies and gentlemen. Can you imagine if 861 ghost workers, each and every ghost worker is going with maybe 100,000 100, Kenyan shillings? That will be 800,000. And uh, Simba Rati also decided one day to do a physical count of drivers. You all saw that video going viral. And he found out that we've got, he had 256 drivers against a physical count of 82 vehicles. And this is something that really uh, touched my heart, that we give people, you know, people wake up very early in the morning by Satisa Uwa to Shamka, and we elect people to put in charge of our affairs, our money, our offices to represent us, but then they misuse our money. Now there is a committee, a public, uh, what we call parliamentary accounts committee uh, in the Senate, that is given the mandate to exercise oversight over these governors. Now, when they saw this report, they said that they are going to take action. Now, the Public Accounts Committee in the Senate is led by the Homer Bay Senator Moses Kajuan, and it comprises of nine members. Now, they said that they are going; they are soon going to summon these, gov uh, these governors because uh, a few years ago the Supreme Court gave the, this Parliamentary Accounts Committee mandate and powers to summon governors to come and share uh, what what they know about this issue. They, they, they compare notes and shed light on what we, we call revenue stream, where 
they look at their location from the national government and any other money that was given, even if it is donation to the county government, and you shed light how it was used. Now they have decided that they are going to call some of these governors. Another example is in uh, Machakos, where uh, the go current governor, Wavinia and Leti, found out that we've got 37 ghost workers. So they are going to summon these governors to shed light. Among them, the counties that are affected are Machakos, Kisi, Nairobi, Vihiga, Mombasa, and all that. So when they finally come in front of them, and those will be the, the new governors in the office, you know they have been hardly in office for like a, a, a month or so. So most of this mess and the rot was perpetuated in the last uh, regime. But there is another catch and the Auditor General is really lamenting and calling out on Kenyans to help her in this job. She's saying that she's seeing a trend where most of the cases are being dropped and she is citing Cases of those who are uh, close to the president, Aisha Jumwa, the, 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 the deputy president and all that. And she's saying that th this trend might not really mean well for Kenyans, where all the cases of those who are close to Kenya Kwanzaa are being dropped, but people like Waluke, the former Sarisia member of parliament, are given 67 years jail term. So the, the auditor general is saying that there are several things that need to be done and she is charging the president with the responsibility of making sure that there is a zero toler uh, tolerance of corruption in this government. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to take a good example where some of the governors who are alleged, alleged to have perpetuated the, the misuse of funds are now seeking uh, refuge in, in, in refuge and solace under the umbrella of, of uh, the president Uru Kenyatta. Look at the former governor, James Ongwai, governor of, of Kisi. He has soon come and uh, now singing praises to the president himself. They have formed a union where he is almost untouchable. If, for example, Governor Arati will be called upon by the Parliamentary uh, Accounts Committee to shed light on the revenue stream and to give uh, an account of what he found out there, how much and the records that he has, and then it is found because the Parliamentary Accounts Committee will only recommend that we found out this mess and we recommend the DPP to take over and maybe the DCI to take over if these are criminal charges because I don't know for those who know, please sh share with me, let me know. Misuse of uh, taxpayers fund, is it a criminal offense or no, or, 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 or not? But I think the DPP, the, the, the Director of Public Prosecutions will be called upon to come and uh, open charges again, uh, uh, against these people. But by the trend that you've seen, do you think somebody like Governor Ngwai, the former Governor Ngwai, can be arrested now or prosecuted, it is going to be very difficult. And another example is in Machakos. The former governor of Machakos is now the dining with the high and mighty. He is the powerful cabinet secretary in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, ladies and gentlemen. If he is indicted by the Parliamentary Accounts Committee, what will really happen? And so the Auditor General is saying that until the, 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 the President, the office of the President, decides not to harbor and give solace and refuge to those who have messed up with the taxpayers' funds, then nothing is going to happen. People will be misusing funds and when they realize that things are bad and uh, the, 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 the authorities are on their back, then they will run to the government. And you, you all know that if Ruto says that they are not going to be arrested, then it will be very rosy for them. The other person that is being called upon to ensure that we have, uh, to, to, is being called upon to clean the mess is the president of the judiciary. Yesterday, and I think that case is being determined today, the DPP, Mr. Nudin Haji, did a letter to, to, to the courts to drop charges against the deputy president. I don't want to judge because I'm not privy. The only thing I know is that it was a, it, they, were, it, they were charges about nine. 9.3 billion Kenya shillings that was tagged uh, on the head of the deputy president and they're saying that some of these cases were being cajoled and coerced on them 
to prosecute and to level charges against those who were aligned to the deputy president. So they are saying that these were political machinations. I don't know how true that is. But the courts are being called upon that, in fact, the judiciary, Madame Kome herself, is being called upon to ensure that they help clean this mess. Not every Tom, Dick and Harry who comes and says, I was being targeted. Because now, it seems that if you want to be safe, you simply say, I was being targeted. And especially if you were closer to the, to the, to the president when he was the deputy president then, and you say that, you know, because of my political affiliation, because I was supporting the deputy president then, I was being targeted. Now you are being released. And Madame Kome is being called upon to lead her team to ensure that we recover the taxpayers' money. Otherwise, we will lose the money that were misused in the previous regime, and then we will perpetuate corruption. Because once we have a safe haven for criminals, and you know very well that, ah, mimi nikijua nikiiba nikienda kwa president and the DPP, the, the DPP will write, will write a letter requesting the courts to drop charges, and the courts will do it very easily then I will simply still knowing very well that nothing will happen. In fact, this is going to perpetuate a lot of impunity, where we just do things knowing very well that there are no consequences. And the other person that came into sharp focus is the DPP. The Director of Public Prosecutions has said that he was being compromised when they were working with the, the former DCI uh, Mr. George Kinoti. Now the question that very many are asking, ladies and gentlemen, if he was able to bow down to the pressures of the DCI, what will happen today? What if the president gives him pressure, the deputy president gives him pressure, or the current DPP piles pressure on him to drop charges? Because we look at the right hand side and the left hand too. If I was able to be compromised by the, by the DCI, the same office is there, I can still com be, be, be compromised. So the DPP is also admitting that he is vulnerable and therefore we cannot even you know believe and trust what he's saying so those three people are being called upon but the buck stops with the president so the auditor general is calling upon all these people to ensure that they do a clean job so that they can clean the past route and to ensure that we don't perpetuate corruption the parliamentary accounts committee is also being cautioned to ensure that they do this work without any malice because some of the senators are eyeing the gubernatorial position in the next general election and so they would want sometimes to crucify the the current governors they paint them in bad faith so that the the public will see them the constituents of the public of those of those uh, counties will see them as corrupt people so they are being called upon to do their due diligence to be fair to work without any favoritism. And ladies and gentlemen, this is the mess that we are in. And Kenyans are also being called upon to shout. Because always we wake up to vote, our money is being misused, but then we went, we, we, we really go back to our tribal cocoons and say, he is a thief, but he is our thief. So just understand that as we grapple with these problems, we need money for CBC, we need money to buy food. The basic commodities have got their prices soaring high. There are people who are misusing our money. And they're looking at us, staring at us. There is nothing we can do. Why? Because we don't want to rise up. And the Auditor General is calling upon you guys so that we can rise up together and help her in this work. The Senate too must do their work. The President and the Judiciary and the DPP, ladies and gentlemen. You can go and check that report and you will easily be, you will be touched by the, the, the mess that is there. Is the president going to offer a, hef, a safe haven and refuge for thieves? We don't know. So the president has got everything. Let him do a good job and Kenya will move forward. Thank you for listening, ladies and gentlemen. Let's meet in another video. Cheers.